can't seem to know when we're on. Okay. Sorry for the delay. We had a cabling problem. So welcome to Load Balancing as a Service, Mataka and Beyond. This is kind of an ongoing series we have talking about what we've done in load balancing in the previous cycle and what we're going to be doing uh, going forward into Newton. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Michael Johnson. I'm with Hewitt Packard Enterprise. I'm the current PTL for the Octavia project. I'm Stephen Blukoff. I'm with uh, Blue Box, comma, and IBM company. And uh, I am one of the cores for the Octavia project. I'm Doug Fish with IBM. I am a uh, core on the Horizon project. Great. So quick agenda, we're just gonna talk about who's involved um, in the recent OpenStack user survey. Then uh, Doug's gonna give us a, an overview of the Horizon dashboard work that we've done for Elbas V2. And Stephen will talk about uh, the layer seven uh, rules and pool sharing that we've added. Then I'll come back and talk a little bit about what's new in Octavia and the roadmap there, and we'll open it up for questions and, and talk about the other uh, summit sessions. So who's involved? Um, we're really lucky on our project. We have a lot of companies that are involved and participate actively in load balancing as a service and Octavia. So this is just um, the group of people I, I had from previous slides and know have been active and contributing, but there are many more. Um, and we want to thank these companies for supporting the project. I also want to thank all of you that filled out the user survey. Um, this is the slide that talks about the most actively used, interested in, or planned to use features in Neutron. And as you can see at the top of the list is software-based load balancing. So thank you for contributing to that survey. That helps us um, justify our activities on this project with our employers and, and continue to do good work. So with that, I'll pass it off to Doug. Thanks, Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, my team uh, and I implemented the, uh, the Neutron LBAS dashboard for the Mataka release. It's a plug-in into Horizon. Um, and the focus our effort, of our effort was to go ahead and create a, uh, to let, let you create a new load balancer, including the associated objects to actually do load balancing. So that would include uh, associating a listener, creating a default pool, uh, putting in a health monitor to make sure that the, um, the, the pool members are still working, and then populating the pool with members. Uh, in addition to that initial creation, you can do some basic uh, update and delete type operations. So you can go ahead and add or remove additional listeners. Uh, you can add and remove members from the default pool. Uh, you can remove or recreate the default pool and you could uh, make updates to the health monitoring uh, strategy. There are a few things you might want to do with the UI that you can't yet. Uh, you can't yet do L7 load balancing, and uh, the UI is really not suitable for monitoring the state of your uh, pool members to make sure that they're responding to health checks appropriately. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and begin the demo. I've prepared this system by launching three instances. Um, to represent the workload that I want to balance. And I also created a floating IP because I'm eventually going to pretend to put my load balancer on a public network. So you can see here I'm, I'm logging in as a uh, demo user. This is not something you have to be an administrator to do. And here I have my, my three uh, instances I'm going to load balance, balance you can see at the bottom. I'm going to navigate to the uh, project network load balancer menu item that's available. I don't have any load balancers yet, so I'm going to go ahead and create one by clicking the create load balancer icon. Uh, here you can see that uh, I've got some basic details I need to provide. I'm just going to provide a uh, subnet and place my load balancer on the private subnet. Uh, if I wanted to, I could specify a specific IP address for it or change the name. I'm going to go ahead and click next. I'm going to uh, choose the protocol for my listener. This is a simple HTTP uh, application that's being load balanced, so I'll select that protocol. The, pro the port will be defaulted appropriately. I'll continue. Uh, here I can specify the algorithm that's going to be used for the load balancing. For my application, uh, round robin is suitable. I'll select that here and continue. 
And so here you can see I've got the three uh, instances available from Nova. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the three of them to my pool. As you can see, the, the port is defaulted, the weight is defaulted. You, you might notice that um, the instances are still available for selection um, at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and I could add the same instance multiple times with different ports if that was the strategy I was using for um, managing, managing this, but I'm not. Um, also, you can see that I can add an external uh, IP address for balancing. This could be some server that's not necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily belong to Nova. I could add that by specifying the IP address, its subnet, and a port. Um, would be easy, but I'm not going to do that as part, of the, as part of this demo. It's really not, it's not my scenario here. So you can see I'm back to my three instances that I want to load balance. I'll go ahead and click Next. I'll specify the characteristics of my health monitor. Uh, I'm just going to select the monitor type of HTTP and uh, maybe adjust the health check interval slightly. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create my load balancer at this point. So at this point, you can see some uh, details of the load balancer that's been created. Um, it, it would be reasonable at this point to maybe go ahead and do some testing and make sure that my load balancer is uh, working, make sure all my instances are participating in the load balancing. Uh, I am a developer. I'm not going to do that kind of thing. I'm just going to go ahead and assign an IP address to my uh, load balancer so it's available on my public subnet. So here I'm going to go ahead and choose the associate floating IP action. I can specify either a specific address or just choose one from the pool. I'm going to pick a particular address in this case. And with that, my application would be uh, have a load balancer in front of it and an associated uh, floating IP address. I'm going to go through here and click um, the load balancer's uh, object, and you can see what I've created here. It's online and active. Uh, we can click and see some of the details. Uh, it has a floating IP address assigned. Uh, we can link to some of the other panels and find out information about the subnet or the uh, port that it's been created on. I can step in and take a look at the uh, listeners that are specified in my pool. Here's the one that I created by default. And I can go out and find more detail about the listener. I can see that it has a, uh, uh, the, uh, the protocol that's being used, dig into the default port, find the balancing algorithm to review it. Uh, finally, I can take a look at the uh, members from here and see that my um, members are being load balanced. So if you'd like to try this out yourself, we have a plugin into DevStack. Um, so in your local.com file, just go ahead and uh, add either of the lines that I've specified here. Uh, it's worth noting that the uh, level of the plugin needs to match the level of Horizon. Um, don't try to use the master level of Neutron LBAS dashboard with a stable Metaka Horizon. I don't think you'll get good results in the long term. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Steven to talk about L7. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the new features that uh, was released with the Metaka release of OpenStack and, and Neutron Load Balancer as a Service in Octavia uh, is L7 content switching. And this, this particular diagram just shows sort of how things fit together, and I know that it's, it's rather complicated, so we're going we're gonna to get into it a little bit more here. Um, but w along with the L7 content switching, there's a new API that's associated with it. Um, and so uh, a lot in... in uh, the, uh, the way that that works, uh, let's see, let's go ahead. Um, so, so uh, why would you want to actually use L7 content switching? By the way, when I say L7, it's layer 7. So when you think of the OSI model and, and everything about it, layer 7 is typically the application layer. So what that allows you to do, um, without layer 7, uh, by default, all the requests get routed to the listener's default pool. Um, but sometimes as your client or the tenant's application grows, that's not always the, the uh, great behavior. For example, you might have certain backend servers that are optimized for serving uh, dynamic requests 
uh, like application server type stuff, and other ones that are optimized for serving static requests, stat static information. And, um, and so in those particular cases, as your application grows, you don't necessarily want to have to deploy multiple load balancers and update all URLs, especially if you have a, a bunch of people linking from external sources and whatnot. You have uh, uh, basically a URL structure on your site that you don't really want to change, but it's not going to scale well without, uh, without doing some routing based on information that gets embedded within the actual uh, client request. So, and that's exactly what uh, this L7, new L7 functionality does. It allows the load balancer to look within the HTTP request and pick out certain things in it and make a routing decision based on what it finds in, in the HTTP request. Um, this works for the HTTP and terminated protocols only right now because that's mostly what people are using load balancers for. Uh, we, tried, we shot for solving the 90% use case with most of this stuff. Um, and right now, the, again, we don't have a Horizon UI for this stuff, um, but it, we're, we're hoping to be able to get that landed in, in Newton. Um, so the, uh, the uh, layer seven content stuff, uh, we, we, so you have a problem there. We need to define how do you, how do you instruct the load balancer how to do those uh, routing decisions. Well, we have layer seven rules and layer seven policies. Um, layer seven rules uh, is just, uh, just a, a layer seven rule is just a single statement of logic that gets matched against client requests. Um, and L7 rules evaluate to true or false. So examples of those might be, well, the request URL starts with slash API, or the request has a cookie in it that um, it called client group and it is equal to the string group one or the request header, um, you know, my X, X my header that your application has instructed the client to send uh, matches some regular expression that you've, you've decided. All of that stuff is, again, dependent on the application, um, and we tried to make it flexible and hit the, again, the 90% use case for what we see most people doing in other environments where they actually use layer seven content switching. Um, and so, uh, anyway, there's, there's um, quite a few different permutations that you can do on different rules, and those are documented. Um, right now, it's documented on the wiki. You'll see them in the next few weeks that uh, that documentation will end up within the uh, Octavia and Neutron LBAS projects. So, um, layer seven rules. Now, there's also layer seven policies, and a layer seven policy is just a collection of layer seven rules. Um, L7 policies get assigned to a listener, so that's sort of their parent object. Um, and all layer seven rules on a given policy are logically anded together. So what does that mean? Um, if you, for example, have a layer seven rule that says, I want the uh, host name that's requested to match www.example.com, and that's one rule, and, the other, and you have another rule that says the URI must start with slash API, well, both of those rules must evaluate to true in order for that layer seven policy to uh, get executed. And what I mean by executed is the layer seven policy defines an action that will be taken if all of its rules evaluate to true. Um, so most commonly, that's gonna be a redirect to pool backend, so you, instead of going to the default pool for the, for the load balancer or for the listener, you're gonna go to some other pool that you define. Um, and again, you could, you could do that in the, in the simple case of like slash API goes to a pool of API servers, whereas everything else goes to static content servers. Um, if you need a logical or to define your particular policy, um, the way we decided to do that was you just create multiple policies that have the same action. So for example, if I have a um, you know, situation where I want www1.example.com and www2.example.com to get routed to a, a specific backend pool, um, you can do that by defining uh, two different policies with rules for each one of those, which will then go to the same backend pool, or you could just create a regular expression that matches both www1 and 2, um, which is a little bit more efficient for the backend software to do. It doesn't really matter. There's, there's multiple ways to skin this cat. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a demo. Uh, I was, oh, no, sorry, I was right. I need to talk about pool sharing. So pool sharing is, is relatively simple to understand. Here is um, a model of a, a hierarchy of a load balancer with a couple of listeners on it where pool sharing is not used. Um, and here is one where pool sharing is used. What that means is two, two listeners are able to use the same backend pool. This is really handy, for example, if you have a uh, SSL terminated uh, uh, HTTP listener on port 443 and uh, a regular HTTP listener on port 80 and you want them to go to the same backend application pool. 
Um, the reason why we, we concentrated on adding this feature in Metaka is because this is also really handy for layer seven rules, uh, sorry, la layer seven policies that need to have the same action. Because then you can point them all at the same pool object, uh, which makes it really handy if you need to add or remove uh, members from that pool. It makes it much easier for the tenants to do that. Okay, so now onto the demo. So in this demo, I'm going to uh, create uh, an HTTP listener, listener one, with a default pool, pool one, that contains server, server one, as its only member. Uh, I'm gonna add an L7 policy and a rule which sends all requests which start with slash API to pool two, which contains server two. Um, and then also to demonstrate the, uh, the shared pools functionality, I'm gonna create uh, listener two, which just uses pool two as its default pool. So the setup I've done here, again, this is just using Metaka DevStack, what's in there right now, uh, using Neutron LBAS with the Octavia driver. Um, and before these slides, I launched two application servers on the private subnet uh, with simple web servers. They just respond with, you're on server one or you're on server two, so you can tell which pool you're reaching. Um, and uh, the uh, security groups in this particular demo have set to be pretty, pretty open and liberal. Um, it, obviously in production, you would do it slightly differently. Um, okay, so here's the demo setup again. I've got two web servers. Server one is on 10.0.0.5 at port 80,000, and server two is uh, 10.0.0.6 on port 80,000. And you can see there, they're server one and server two. And the first step, of course, is I need to create the load balancer. So here's the Neutron LBAS command to do that. Um, and it stays in pending create for a, a few moments while it, it goes ahead and launches a backend Octavia. Amphora, the, uh, you'll notice that the, um, the IP address for the load balancer was set to 10.0.0.7. Um, that's gonna become important as I show you how things work later on. Um, and then from there, we're gonna go ahead and create a listener on top of that. And um, let's see, we just put it on top of port 80 on top of uh, load balancer LB1. Um, then, I, you know, here you can see I've, I've gone ahead and, and curled the URL for the, the, the listener, and you get a service 503 unavailable because it has no backend pool and therefore no backend members, so there are no servers in the backend. That's, and this is an expected response when you have a, a, uh, a, a load balancer that, uh, listener that does not have a backend pool. Um, the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and create pool one and make it listener one's default pool. Um, and you can see here, I, I went ahead and did that. You go ahead and curl it again, but there's no backend servers yet, so it's still you're gonna get uh, an error message that says there's, there's no service available yet. I'm gonna go ahead and add that, that member one, and lo and behold, look, we're now talking to server one. Um, okay, so we got a standard load balancer set up. Let's go ahead and do the next one. We're gonna go ahead and create pool two on load balancer one, uh, but we're not gonna associate it with any, any listener. Um, and that's, that's a new change here with Metaka. You can go ahead and do that. So we create this pool. It only exists as a logical um, object in the database until you actually associate it with some listener. Um, and you can see here on, that, on pool two, I'm gonna go ahead and create member two. Um, and you know, the curl is kind of cheating here. I'm actually just hitting member two. There is no way to actually access it right now through the load balancer because it's not associated with any listener. There's no way to get to pool two yet. And so let's go ahead and create an L7 policy called policy one, and we're gonna create it on listener one. And you can see here the, uh, the action is to redirect to a pool, and I tell it the redirect pool I wanna go to is pool two. Um, and we're gonna associate it with listener one, and we're naming it policy one. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a rule onto that policy, and the rule is gonna be of a type path. We're looking at the actual path of the URI. Uh, the compare type is starts with, and the uh, value of that compare is gonna be, that we're gonna compare against is slash API. So the rule is, um, we want to evaluate any incoming request, its path, and make sure that it starts with slash API, and if so, then this, this rule evaluates to true. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, and then for our shared pools demo, we're gonna create a second listener and we're gonna set pool tools as default pool. Pretty easy to do, and you can see here I've gone ahead and curled it. So there we go, we've, we've set up a listener one with a L7 policy and a rule. Um, which should send anything, any URI that starts with slash API to the second pool, and anything else should go to the first pool. So let's see if it works. Look, it works. So <laughs> um, just, I'll just run through the curl commands here real quick. The first one just hits the, the default URI. You're on server one, therefore pool one. Um, I go ahead and hit the, the second listener, and you're, you're on server two, so pool two. The second listener is going to pool two. Um, then we go ahead and hit the first listener again on slash API, and look, that's going to pool two as well. And, you know, again, it evaluates API with other stuff in the path. Well, it started with API, so the rule is true. It went, went, go, it went ahead to uh, pool two. But the other one without that slash API, it's, it doesn't match the rule. We're going back to pool one. 
Um, and then let's see, yeah, so that's, that's essentially how it works. Pretty, pretty simple there. I know that L7 sounds pretty daunting, but when you get right down to it, it these are, this, this hits about 95% of the use cases we typically see in production. Um, and there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Michael now. Continue. Thank you. So what you've seen are new features that are available in uh, Neutron LBAS, and that also means that they're available in Octavia, the reference driver for, for Neutron LBAS. So now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about where we are in Octavia. So just a quick review, Octavia is a load balancing driver that plugs into Neutron LBAS version two API. Um, just like other hardware drivers that are present in Neutron LBAS, Octavia is just a software implementation that uses service VMs. Um, so we have four main processes, our API, um, which the uh, LBAS, uh, Neutron LBAS driver plugin talks to, uh, to interact with Octavia. We have our worker, which does the provisioning um, and kind of the workflow of managing um, the Amphora. We use the term Amphora um, instead of service VM because we expect there will be a container implementation of an Amphora or even a bare metal implementation. All of these components you see at the bottom in blue are driver based. So we can plug in alternate technologies into Octavia. So uh, for example, with containers, we can uh, swap out that driver and not use service VMs, but use a, a container implementation. Same thing on networking. Um, health manager, that component is tasked with collecting status and statistics, and also uh, monitoring and managing the health of those Amphora. So should uh, an Amphora fail for some reason, it will um, spawn another one, or as we're about to see, um, we have added active standby, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then housekeeping, uh, this is a periodic job process. Um, it does things like clean up the database. Um, if you have the spares pool enabled, which means you have Amphora pre-booted, just waiting to be configured, um, it'll maintain that spares pool. And another new feature that we have is it um, will manage and rotate the security certificates we use to manage the Amphora. Uh, so I'll talk about that shortly. So what's new in Octavia? Um, one of the biggest features is we have active standby now. I demoed this in Tokyo, um, but it is now fully merged and uh, fully functional. So this allows us to spin up two Amphora for each load balancer, a primary and a secondary. And should the primary fail, it will move that IP and um, transition to the secondary in seconds. It's configurable. Um, it uses a VRP implementation. Um, again, I, I demoed that in Tokyo. You can go look at the YouTube video if you want to see that in action. Um, since Tokyo, we've added anti-affinity. So we're leveraging Nova's uh, filter capabilities so that we make sure that those two M4 are not on the same host, <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose of having your active and standby. So if you have that available in your environment and you have enough compute environments, you can turn on the anti-affinity. Uh, capability and that will guarantee that those M4 instances are on different um, hosts or, or however Nova defines affinity. Um, we've also added the capability to um, do failover for those active and standby M4. So let's say your primary fails um, completely out, you've migrated all your traffic to your secondary and, and we maintain session persistence between those so your, your customer will see a very short interruption. But now you've got that dead M4 sitting there. Well, we also leverage that housekeeping component to rebuild that, fail over that M4 and bring back in a replacement um, so you go back into an active standby uh, situation. Uh, so that's really nice for um, resiliency. And the last bullet, um, when we do that, we don't preempt the new master. So we don't wanna interrupt the customer flows, give them a, a, you know, a short blip in their traffic. Um, so the other node that became the master will remain the master until it fails and then it would switch back to that new, new backup. So pretty good stuff with active standby for uh, availability. As I mentioned, the housekeeping component, um, when we interact with our M4, we have an agent that sits inside those service VMs and we use a REST API to control them. Um, that is all uh, encrypted using TLS. What we put in is a component that lets you set an expiration period. And so when those certificates that we issue to each M4, and each M4 gets a unique um, certificate for it, 
um, when it's coming up to its expiration, we'll go ahead and automatically reissue and update that certificate on that M4 for you. So you can meet your compliance for having um, you know, expiring certificates on uh, all your components. Layer 7 rules, uh, Stephen just kind of went through that. Um, great stuff. I put in um, the different policy types, so reject, redirect to pool, redirect to URL, um, and then the different rule types that we can do there. That was a, another great addition. So that's also, it's in Neutron Elbass, but it's also implemented in the Octavia driver now. We had aspirations to do single call actions. So being able to create a whole load balancer top to bottom, the load balancer, the listener, the pool, the members, everything in one API call. Uh, and along those lines, we wanted to have cascading delete. So you could say, I want to delete this load balancer cascade and delete all of those resources that are associated with it. This was something that um, the, the UI folks were really looking for. Um, <laughs> we got really far along on that, um, but we ended up running right up against the Mataka deadline. And so those are still work in progress. The code is up there for review and should merge uh, in Newton 1. Another pretty cool feature, so the M4 image is a service VM, and so we store that image in Glance um, today. And if you needed to do an update um, to that image, you know, a patch or, or a new version, um, you can modify that in the config file, and then you'd need to restart your controllers, and from then on, the M4 would pick that up. If you needed to um, uh, update in use M4, you could do a failover procedure and then you would have updated uh, load balancer images. Well, um, we had a contribution in Metaka that allows us to use Glance tags. So instead of having to restart the controller and go and edit your config file, you can now load a new image in Glance and move the tag that says M4 or whatever you put in your config file um, in Glance from your old image to your new image, and from that point on, Octavia will automatically start using your new image when it boots M4. So a much simpler maintenance uh, process available for you. We've also started doing um, more hardening and making sure that we have our security story uh, up to snuff. So we've added um, Bandit as a, a check gate. So all of our check-ins go through the Bandit um, static analysis tool. You'll probably see a couple other talks about that tool um, at the summit. Um, but it's a great thing. Every check-in will go through a, security, a static security analysis, and we can block or um, you know, evaluate the risk of, of that change and make sure that we're not introducing um, new security vulnerabilities, you know, SQL injection or whatever. And um, coming really soon, you know, this was a, another thing that just didn't quite make it into Metaka. Um, the HA proxy that we're running inside that M4 uh, will be running inside a network namespace. So we're going to completely isolate it from the other networks that are associated with that M4 that's running. Um, that code has merged on master for Neutron, Newton, and we'll be backporting that and, and releasing a new version of Octavia in the next couple weeks, and that'll be um, 081. So, that's all the new stuff in Octavia. Let's talk about kind of the roadmap. So this is the roadmap I shared in Tokyo. Um, we had aspirations, again, for active standby, high availability control plane, layer seven rules, and container support and flavor framework support um, for the Mataka cycle. Um, we didn't quite make it, so I'll go ahead and move forward. This is what we accomplished. Um, We've got the active standby in complete, layer seven, but the other components, are, there are some pieces of that that are not quite ready yet. So active active is still actually in spec. Um, we're still working on that and evolving that. There's actually a talk tomorrow where they're gonna go in depth on kind of the current proposal and where we're at on that. Uh, the horizontal scale is another piece of active active. So that's where um, you do the elastic uh, grow and, and shrink uh, the number of M4 that are serving a given load balancer. The container support, we did get a good start on. There are some patches up, um, particularly around the networking components and the compute components to work with containers. Uh, but there were a number of challenges that came into that. Um, particularly, uh, Octavia does a lot of hot plugging of, of our network ports. So when you add a member from a tenant network, uh, we typically hot plug that network into the M4. Well, with containers, that's 
hot plugging's not quite there yet, so there's a number of challenges. That is a work in progress. Flavor framework, we did add the capability to do Neutron LBAS flavors, but right now it's pretty much tied to the provider, so it's very similar to the current provider functionality, and that's where you can say, I want my load balancer created with the Octavia driver, or um, maybe the, the legacy namespace HA proxy driver. Um, so flavors has got that far. Unfortunately, in Octavia, we've not pulled the metadata down in where you can say um, flavor gold is active standby, flavor bronze is a standalone load balancer, but that's uh, something we want to do. The high availability comp control plane, you can run all of those Octavia components processes on multiple instances today. What we're talking about here when we're saying high availability control plane is once an action starts, so let's say a create load balancer call comes in, right now if that controller um, completely fails, somebody powers off the server or something and it's in the middle of creating that load balancer, um, it's just gonna stop and be stuck in a pending creator or an error state. Um, what we wanna do is pull in some of the um, job board components of task flow and be able to have an alternate controller pick up that creation process that's in flow and uh, continue that work on another controller should a controller go down. So that's, that's the aspirational piece of that that we didn't get done. And then of course I mentioned the single call actions. Really close on those. So again, um, you're welcome to try Octavia yourself. It is integrated with DevStack. Um, pretty easy to spin up. Um, just enable the services and update your local RC. So we are looking for contributors, of course. Uh, we're a semi-small team, but we do have a, a good core group of people that contribute, uh, but we can always use more, um, particularly in uh, testing and documentation, and uh, if any of these features that are aspirational sound exciting for you, please come see us, join our RC meetings, join our channel, there's people on all the time. So other related sessions. Um, Tomorrow, uh, there's a session on Heat. So Heat has added templates for LBAS v2. Um, so you can now create Heat templates to deploy a, a, load, a Neutron LBAS v2 load balancer. And the, the deep dive into elastic load balancing, that's what I was uh, mentioning earlier with the active-active. Uh, they're giving a talk to talk about where they're at on that and, and kind of a, a strategy. There's two hands-on labs. Uh, one is uh, writing AngularJS plugin for Horizon with our friend Doug here. And um, there's also going to be an install and configure of uh, Octavia session. Both of those are RSVP. You do need to sign up for those. You can't just show up and, and join. Because they are hands-on, there will be programming involved and some prep. And then finally, the design summit. Um, we actually just had that this afternoon. We we're talking about the future of the advanced services and new uh, neutron and uh, the future for those. So. Any questions from the audience? Dustin. Um, I was wondering, are there publicly available M4 images and um, is anyone running service security updates? You, you mentioned rotate those. So we don't distribute binary images. Um, the dev stack component uh, will build an image and there are scripts included in the Octavia repo that uses Triple O Disk Image Builder to create you an image. Uh, but we don't distribute anywhere a cooked image. But there's no, but there isn't a description of relevant, um, relevant security ones if one wanted to maintain a secure M4 image for their deployment. Right, you would need to um, build new images as, as the updates come out based on which OS you're using for your M4 image. The default's uh, Ubuntu. Uh, there's also Fedora support in that script. Um, there's a couple options. Any other questions? Slides yes. Um, in Tokyo, we were able to post the slides on the uh, summit schedule. Um, I, I think they'll open that up after the summit's over. So you'll be able to go back to the OpenStack website, find the session on the schedule, and you will see the slides available to download there. Sir? 
Hi there. Is that, okay. In the uh, physical um, server load balancer environment, there's typically the concept of having traffic for uh, SSH come into the VIP and then go through a um, encryption de decryption appliance before it goes to the servers to take the burden off the CPU of the servers. Is there any thought of creating such a function within this framework? We do support TLS offload. Um, so SSL offload is supported on uh, Neutron, LBAS, and Octavia both. Uh, we use Barbican to store the certificates and the uh, secure content, if you will. In, but, in uh, fact, that exact concern is exactly why Octavia takes the architecture that it does, where you, the idea is to launch many different M4s so you can horizontally scale uh, managing that CPU load because that is, on the load balancer, that is the thing that hits the CPU the hardest is the TLS offload. Yes. Any idea to use uh, UDP protocol? <laughs> at, at this time, we don't really have plans for it. If you have right. a need and have some developer resources to throw at it, we can certainly take a look. But right now, uh, it, it doesn't support it. It doesn't support UDP. Right. We have a plug-in model um, for the m and for the load balancing component in it. So if you have a use case and you're, you're motivated, uh, it's pretty straightforward to add an alternate technology from HA proxy to be your primary load balancing component inside the M4. So that's certainly a capability if you have the need. We just we don't have it today. Is Hello? there anything in IPv6 that is not supported, or is IPv6 supported at all? Um, we have some bugs. Um, the framework is there um, to do IPv6 all the way through, and in fact, you could do translation. Um, so you could have a V4 on the front of your load balancer and V6 and back or vice versa because we are a full proxy. Um, but uh, recently I started looking into that and, and playing around with that and I found some bugs. So um, we will be fixing those in Newton. Uh, but the, fa the framework's there. All of our technology does support it. We have a couple gotchas. We tried to architect it so that it was completely IPv6 compatible. Yeah. We just have some bugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? All right, thank you.